The dog held the rope in its mouth crawling cautiously on the thin ice, determined to rescue the doctor who had slipped and fallen into the water. However, the sound of cracking ice kept echoing making the dog to cower in fear unable to move. Meanwhile, the doctor in the icy river was trembling barely holding on with his frozen body at risk of falling in at any moment. Watching this scene, the dog's determination to save overcame the fear of death. Without hesitation, she picked up the rope again, continuing forward regardless of her own safety. After reaching the doctor, the dog looped the rope around his neck. The doctor, with his last strength, threaded the rope through his arms. Under the owner's command, all the dogs collectively exerted their strength and successfully pulled the doctor out of the icy river. Although the doctor was saved, he was severely frostbitten with a broken leg. The worst thing was a severe blizzard was approaching. Jerry wasted no time securing the doctor on a sled, adjusting the sled dog positions with Maya leading at the forefront. Jerry put his hope of survival on lead dog Maya. With Jerry's command, the dogs put all their strength into it, running towards the camp. Despite delays, a raging blizzard struck them. Jerry lay on the sled. Maya sensed the danger and ran even harder with the other dogs, knowing that only a swift return could save their owner. After a relentless run, they finally reached the camp. Their companions rushed out to help them. Jerry gratefully said to Maya, Good girl, Maya! <laughs> After a preliminary diagnosis, the doctor's life was in critical condition and required immediate transport to the hospital for treatment. Jerry's hands were also frostbitten with his fingers turning black. Without prompt treatment, he could have lost his fingers. Moreover, the blizzard was intensifying, necessitating a swift evacuation. Due to the small size of the plane, they could not bring the dogs along and had to leave them at the camp. Jerry couldn't bear to abandon the dogs and wanted to wait for the next flight with them. However, his frostbite needed urgent care and his ex-girlfriend repeatedly assured him that she would come back to save the dogs. Reluctantly, he agreed to leave the dogs temporarily at the camp. As they packed their gear, the young dog Max broke free from his chain and ran over wanting to leave with his owner. Concerned about the dog's safety, Jerry and his companions resecured Max, fearing the dogs might escape and be in danger. They tightened all the dog's leashes. Finally facing lead dog Maya, Jerry said, All right, Maya. You keep him in line, all right, and I'll be back. I promise. After the plane took off, the dogs realized they had been abandoned by their owner and desperately barked towards the direction of the plane. Only Maya watched quietly, because she firmly believed that their owner would never abandon them and would return for them. However, what she didn't expect was the wait would be 180 days. Three days later, Jerry woke up from the coma and immediately inquired about whether their companion dogs had been retrieved. However, the colleague hesitated to provide a clear answer. Jerry hurriedly sought out his ex-girlfriend for answers only to discover that their planned return to the camp had been canceled with the earliest return being in the spring. This meant the dogs were left without food or water locked up facing certain death. Unable to accept this reality, Jerry stormed into the base command center requesting a rescue mission to save the dogs. However, the commander flatly refused upon hearing it was just to rescue eight dogs. Moreover, another major blizzard was imminent set to cover the entire Antarctic in snow and ice. All personnel at the base needed to evacuate promptly back to New Zealand. Despite his reluctance, Jerry was powerless in the face of this outcome. When Jerry returned to Washington five days later, he had not given up on his dogs applying to relevant government departments in hopes of getting a chance to go back and rescue the dogs. However, the responses he received were absurd. The travel funding applications taking eight months to get results and the research base providing an equally unacceptable answer. They had canceled all travel plans due to the largest blizzard in 25 years. At this point, the eight dogs were left alone in Antarctica for the fifth day. Maya waited with her companions for their owner's return. As the storm grew fiercer, the camp's flag was blown away. In that moment, the strongest dog in the pack buck broke free from his chain and chased after the flag. Even in the absence of their owner, he was determined to protect everything there. The other dogs grew restless pulling at their collars with all strengths. Eventually, even the obedient Maya broke free from her restraints and dashed out. Watching Buck retrieve the flag, the dogs excitedly gathered around cheering for him as they frolicked and played. 
The youngest Max circled in place due to his lack of strength, while the oldest Jack lay quietly weakened by the days of hunger and cold. They endured hunger and waited for 15 days, never leaving the camp, fearing their owner couldn't find them if they left. One day, a seabird flew over the camp and Max was the first to notice. He barked loudly to alert the other dogs using all his strength to break free from the chain and dashed after the seabird. Seeing this, the other dogs followed after Max. By this time, all the dogs had broken free from their restraints except for Old Jack who remained motionless. Maya wanted to help him by biting through the collar but Old Jack refused. Maya gently patted Old Jack's body trying to encourage him to perk up but Old Jack seemed to know his time was near and didn't want to burden the team any longer. He declined Maya's kindness, understanding Old Jack's wishes. Maya licked his head in a final farewell. She had to ensure the survival of the rest of the team. So reluctantly, she left Old Jack behind. Upon Maya's return to the team, she discovered a large group of seabirds gathered below the hill. Max was too excited. He unexpectedly began barking at the birds, causing them to fly away in fear. Fortunately, they didn't fly far and landed nearby. Witnessing this, Maya immediately took on her role as the lead dog positioning herself at the front of the team and issuing commands for the others to capture the birds. Maya then criticized Max and ordered him to stay put and not act impulsively. When the other dogs reached their designated positions, Maya stealthily approached the birds. When she was close, she dashed towards the birds, causing them to scatter in fright. Meanwhile, Maya's companions, who had ambushed from the other side, swiftly closed in surprising Max who had been punished and made to stay aside. He cheered for the other dogs as they successfully caught several birds. However, they didn't eat any of the birds themselves. Instead, they brought them to Maya waiting for her to redistribute the food. Max, who had made a mistake, didn't receive any food. He humbly approached Dewey, hoping for a share, but Dewey firmly refused. Max then approached Shorty, who known for his good nature, shared his food with Max. Unbeknownst to them, they had been surviving independently in Antarctica for 50 days. On this day, they saw the Aurora. Max, feeling restless, began playing and chasing the Aurora with the other dogs excitedly joining in. In this harsh and desolate land, without human care, this moment of joy was particularly precious. However, as they were playing, Dewey accidentally stepped on a snowdrift and fell off a cliff. Seeing this, Maya hurriedly went to check on him. Unfortunately, Dewey lay motionless on the ground, seriously injured. The dogs were deeply saddened by the sight. Truman, Dewey's brother lay on top of him, trying to provide warmth while the other companions stood silently nearby. That night, the winds and snow were particularly harsh, mercilessly battering the dogs. The next morning, they were covered by thick snow. One by one, they poked their heads out from the snow. Maya remained by Dewey's side, but he never woke up. The dogs mournfully bid farewell to their brother with Truman weeping as he groomed Dewey's fur saying his final goodbye. Despite their immense grief, they had to leave. Maya lead the remaining pack to continue surviving. But Max lingered by Dewey's side unwilling to leave. He lay on his cold body filled with deep inner guilty. If not for his playfulness, Dewey wouldn't have met with this accident. He tried to wake his brother, but the miracle didn't happen. Despite his reluctance, he had to choose to leave, but the raging storm obscured his vision. His companions were nowhere to be seen. Anxiously, he barked, but there was no response. He had separated from the rest of the pack. 